welcome to Scripture of the Day. Every weekday, we read chapters of the Bible and then we talk about them here in these videos. Today's chapters are Jeremiah 21 and 22. So you should open the Bible and look at it with me. It would be even better if maybe you've already read the chapters, you've already thought about them, and now you and I are basically gonna sit down and have a conversation about what God just said. Because this is why it's so important. What the Bible says will happen. And we can look for God and find him now as we dig for treasure in his word. If we seek him, we'll find him or we're gonna find God when it's too late. That's what's happening here in Jeremiah 21. King Zedekiah has this great idea. Let's go ask Jeremiah what to do because here comes a nation from the north, King Nebuchadnezzar coming from Babylon. What should we do? Hey, Zedekiah, hello. Like, he's already been telling you this for the first 20 chapters of the book. In fact, you could go back and read the books before this and you would know what's going on. Go back to the law of Moses. He was telling you about it, Zedekiah. So see, here's Zedekiah and he wants to inquire of the Lord. The problem is, it's too late. As a pastor, I see this all the time because I'm here pretty much every day at the church and I'm preaching the word on the weekends, counseling with people all week long, love to talk to people about the Bible, but a lot of people, they don't think they need the Bible. They're out there living their life. But see, then their marriage is gonna fall apart and they're gonna get a divorce or then someone they know and love is gonna die and guess all of a sudden who they're looking for? A pastor to speak to them the word of God at their loved one's funeral or to save their marriage. But maybe you waited to hear the Lord until it's too late when God would have already told you what was gonna happen the whole time. See, everybody is eventually gonna believe and know the truth about God. It's just a matter whether you're gonna see it through the scripture now or you're gonna see it through death and judgment later. See, I like to think of everybody in two categories. There's the people who are yes. These people, they believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he rose from the dead. They know who God is through the gospel of Jesus. See, there's the yes, and then there's the yet. Right now, they might be an atheist, they might believe some other religion, but they don't know God through Jesus yet because there's going to come a day when they're going to also confess that Jesus is Lord and God gave them the name above all names and they might be noting that from a place of judgment but everybody's going to know who Jesus is and so all the people in either category the yes or the yet the only difference between them is the cross once your eyes are opened and you see yourself as a sinner and Jesus died on the cross for your sins and he rose from the dead and he's now the one way truth and life to God. See, so when your eyes are open to see that from the word of God, you become a yes. And what you need if you're still a yet, I don't know if God's really it or not. Well, eventually you're gonna see it and it might be too late. It definitely is for King Zedekiah when he has this great idea, let's go inquire of Jeremiah. It's just like, bro, hello. Like, you missed it. You could have heard it before, but you didn't pay attention to what God was saying until it was too late. And, and not only could he have heard Jeremiah say it before, because uh, not only was Jeremiah faithfully letting the fiery message of God, well, he was prophesying it even when people didn't like it. But here's the thing, even by the time of Jeremiah, they could have known what God said in the law. And, and Jeremiah, he's gonna talk about what's gonna happen and how they're gonna be judged and there's nothing King Zedekiah can do about it. And the real issue was what King Zedekiah was not doing. It, he says, execute justice in the morning, deliver from the hand of the oppressor, him who has been robbed. He's saying, hey, you're the king and people are being oppressed. People aren't being treated with justice. This is why King Nebuchadnezzar is coming to judge because you haven't been just and you're the king. In chapter 22, verse three, thus says the Lord, do justice and righteousness and deliver from the hand of the oppressor him who has been robbed and do no wrong or violence to the resident alien, the fatherless and the widow, nor shed innocent blood in this place. 
So God's bringing up the alien, the sojourner, the stranger, someone from another nation who's there among their nation. He's bringing up the, the widow and the orphan, the people that it's pure and undefiled religion to help. And you know what? This isn't the first time God brought these people up. Like anybody who's read any part of the good book knows God tells you to take care of the widows, take care of the orphans, and if somebody's a stranger, a sojourner, they're not like you, you should love them as you would love your own self. So here's the thing. If King Zedekiah had read the law, and when I say the law, I mean the part of the Bible, the first five books. I'm talking about what Moses wrote on the five scrolls, starting in Genesis. King Zedekiah had read that. He would have already learned that the way he was treating the sojourner or alien, the way he was treating the orphan and the widow, that he was oppressing them and that God was gonna bring judgment on him. He could have learned about this, not by needing a prophet to give him some fresh word from the Lord. No, if he had just read his Bible, he would have already known because what the Bible says will happen. So, for example, let's go to Exodus, the first time God gives his people the law. Exodus 22, 21 to 24, describes exactly what's going on with King Zedekiah. And so this is God saying this way beforehand, hundreds of years before King Nebuchadnezzar, is he ever rolling in from the north? It says, Exodus 22, verse 21, you shall not wrong a sojourner or oppress him for you were sojourners in the land of Egypt. Hey, remember when you were slaves and they oppressed you? Don't ever treat anybody else like that. Treat others in the way that you want to be treated. That summarizes the law and the prophets. King Zedekiah, he could have read this. You shall not mistreat any widow or fatherless child. If you do mistreat them and, then, and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry and my wrath will burn and I will kill you with the sword and your wives shall become widows and your children fatherless. I mean, that's exactly what's gonna happen to Zedekiah. And if he had just ever read it, it would have warned him. He could have listened to it. He could have changed his ways and he would have never had King Nebuchadnezzar showing up on his front porch in the first place. See, this is how relevant the Bible is. If we listen to it, it'll protect us from the bad stuff coming tomorrow because we'll, we'll amend our ways, we'll repent and we'll do what is right. Now, if it's not enough that it says that one time, but then in Deuteronomy, there's a second telling of the law. So God gave it not only in, at Exodus, but he gave it again in Deuteronomy, which is already a generation later. So we're, God's already repeating himself for a second time to a second generation. And Deuteronomy, like if you go to Deuteronomy 27, it gives a whole list of everybody who does these things will be cursed. I mean, it's, it breaks it down here in Deuteronomy. You could read all of Deuteronomy 28. If you obey what God says, you will be blessed. If you disobey, you will be cursed. Well, here in Deuteronomy 27, verse 19, it makes it very clear. Cursed be anyone who perverts the justice due to the sojourner, the fatherless, and the widow, and all the people shall say, Amen. Wow. If, if Zedekiah had just had known that, that they, there's certain people that God's so concerned about how they get treated. Anyone who's from another nation that's sojourning among them, ladies who don't have husbands, kids who don't have parents. God has a heart for these people. And if you don't treat them with justice, it, this is pure and undefiled religion to love these people. And if you don't treat them in the way that you want to be treated, you should expect judgment from God. If you don't do what is just, then you're going to get the justice. See, King Zedekiah, he waits till the enemy is at the door. He waits till the consequences of sin are already showing up on the horizon. He waits till it's too late. When if he had just done some scripture of the day, sitting down with me and you, listening to the word of God. He could have heard what was gonna happen. He could have changed his ways and all of the curses and consequences would have never come with King Nebuchadnezzar from Babylon. So I wanna encourage you, my dear friend, if you're reading through these chapters with me, don't ever stop. What we're doing together 
It's the most important thing we're ever going to do. Hear what God says and do it. That is the way of blessing in your life. And if you're watching this video or you know somebody who you wish was watching this video because they're in the yet and they're going to wait till it's too late. Maybe you just need to remind them today, hey, what the Bible says will happen. And if you read it today and do what it says, you'll be ready for tomorrow. See, don't wait. I love this that we're reading through Jeremiah because even though people today think Jeremiah is the Old Testament and like this happened so long ago, no, the law, Deuteronomy, Exodus, they were already old by the time of Jeremiah. See, that attitude that it's old and it doesn't apply to now, that's what killed King Zedekiah. That's what destroyed the city of Jerusalem. That's what led to judgment in Babylon and exile because they started to think that what God said was old. But what God says will change your tomorrow. That's why I'll see you for more here on Scripture. Love the